Okay, here's a little demonstration of some of the fundamental things that are required to kick in the immune system, activate uh, lymph nodes, thymus gland, and various other glands that are contributing parts of our autoimmune system. Breathing being fundamental, three parts to the breath, abdominal, mid, and upper. The abdominal breath is done with the diaphragm. When you use it, you're pressing down on all the digestive organs, so they kind of move out of the way. So it looks like this. And the side view is like this. That's one part, abdominal breath. Second part is the midsection breath. And this one is directly connected to what we call Anahata Chakra in yoga. Uh, energy vortex center here that governs heart, lungs, circulation, and the famous gland, the thymus gland, which is one of the more recent discoveries in medical science. It puts out thymosin, which activates the whole autoimmune system when needed. So this midsection is the ribs going out and in. It's a separate movement from the abdominal breath. You can see how much my hands are moving. And you can do this as long as you want. When you first begin doing it, if you have not been breathing deep, it dramatically raises your oxygen level and there's a little brain reaction that creates dizziness. That is fine, it's not harmful at all. Your brain adjusts its chemistry and adapts to functioning with a higher level of oxygen, which is better for the brain as well as better for the whole body. So, midsection, the one we want to focus on most for triggering kicking in our autoimmune system. So we do develop immunity to all kinds of viruses, all kinds of bugs. We are designed with the capabilities to do all of this. Then we go to the upper breath. So we're going to use both of these upper ones, the middle and the upper, to go through a couple of positions that then are uh, also beneficial for activating everything in our autoimmune system. The upper chest breathing is the rising and falling of the chest. You can observe how everything just comes up and down. I'm not using abdominal, I'm not using the middle, this is just the up and down. Upper section breath. In our training programs, we exaggerate these in a variety of ways, and this one is exaggerated by lifting the shoulders up and down. And when we're in a situation of stress and fear, we tend to lock this one primarily, which is automatically inhibiting the functions of the thymus gland and the other immune system. Fear is just detrimental for your immune system. So the breathing in this way will maybe bring up the fear, but if you continue breathing, it will also blow it away. So the psychological impact of the breath is blowing away emotional things that stand in our way. And fear and worry and these negative emotions are all in the way of our healthy functioning immune system. So we have the three parts of breath, A, B, C. The full breath looks like this. Now to increase circulation of the whole bloodstream, as well as we're breathing to absorb more oxygen, getting it into the bloodstream, now we want to circulate the blood through all areas of the body at the same time. So we'll do a simple pose called tiger for one. And this is tiger, it's not what some people call a cat cow, there's no such thing. Tiger is a powerful breathing technique. I'll do it from the side so you can see how much movement I have here. You've got a good stance and a nice uh, rectangular position with your two 
knees and your two hands and then I breathe in dropping the belly down exhale going up in breath out breath this moves everything on the inside where you've got circulation going, lymphatic fluids, the main artery and veins going in and out of the heart into the lungs. So everything is moving more, increasing circulation, getting oxygen out to all the cells of the body, including white blood cells, which are circulating in the lymphatic system as well as in the main bloodstream when needed. So now another exercise we can do is coming up into what's called a camel pose. And we come up in breath to this point and then we bend backwards. This one also might make you dizzy. So take it easy. Don't stay back there very long. We just come up breathing in. Walk in the breath, go back. Exhale, sit back down. Don't stay any longer than that. This is just a chest expander. It's opening up the area. You might feel something in anahata, you might feel that your thymus gland is becoming active again. We do not avoid feelings in yoga. We breathe our way through them, bringing more oxygen and more prana to reactivate glands, organs, body parts, whatever is required. So again, in breath, lock, back bend, forward and down. In breath. Out breath. That is one. The next one I'm going to show you for now. Just do a couple for today. We can keep going on this. There's a whole series of activation techniques for the autoimmune system and for every other gland and organ in your body. Now I have mentioned the upper section breath, an important part for circulating things in the upper region of the lungs. This is where the lymphatic system comes up. The lymph goes through the lymph nodes and then goes back into circulation. The lymph nodes are where they are, the lymph is scanned, checked out, filtered, and anything that is in there, any kind of a virus, any bacteria, debris and pollution going into your system, it's filtered out here. And in the case of bacteria and virus, neuropeptides, little signals are sent to different parts of the immune system to come up with, figure out an antibody, a macrophage, or any kind of white blood cell that is required, killer T cells, anything there. The system scans go from here to the rest of the autoimmune system and your body knows how to react and how to create an antibody for anything. And it should only take 24 hours if you, you can stop eating and fast and breathe, just have water, even fruit juice or whatever. All together, cut out the sugar, breathe deep, go easy on diet, and do the yogic deep breathing, and your autoimmune system will be able to manufacture an antibody within 24 hours. This is not a theory. I've tested this out with myself and with a lot of students over the last 50 years. This works very well. So the position, we go with the upper section breath like this. Feel not only the lift, but your shoulders kind of expanding outward and away from each other, opening up this whole upper chest cavity. This is pumping putting pressure and release and pumping the lymphatic fluid through all the lymph nodes and back into the bloodstream. This is a very important part of our whole autoimmune system. Then we go into this posture, stretching the hands out. This is a child's pose, a variation on it. Take your hands out, way out to the front as far as you can. Lift up onto fingertips so that your arms are kind of pulling the shoulders out and away from each other, opening things up. And you relax, drop your head down. Now, your seated position, you can be up on blocks if you want. If you're okay with the position, do it whichever way you can. You can have your knees and thighs a little further apart. 
to let your body torso kind of sink further down going into the position in breath out breath From the inside, I am feeling this expansion, contraction. And you can also add visualizing a feeling that you are literally pumping the lymphatic fluids through the end of the system. This is the point from which the lymph is coming from your hands, your arms, your legs, and up to this point through the lymph nodes and then back into circulation. The checkpoints. So. You can do this for several minutes, as long as you like. It's not a position that is you can OD on. It's simply easy to do. You make it comfortable in the way you're sitting, but feel this stretching of the armpits and shoulders and the pumping of the breath. Also, this is an area where people tend to get stressed quite a bit because we sit at the office or we're always working on our iPhones or computers. So the area gets tight because it's not moving. Doing the motion with this expansion contraction, when we come up out of it, we can do some shoulder rolls to liberate more. The stress and tension that is here is part of what holds the fear in. And when you breathe it out, you will find the worry and the fear levels kind of subside and you simply feel better psychologically. And if you're looking over here, this is representing kind of the factory where the lymphocytes, white blood cells are made here. This is inside your bones, the bone marrow. And it's been found that it's in bone marrow all over the body, but principally in the big uh, femur bones of the legs, etc. And lower legs. So we have um, a series of lymphocytes and feeding cells, all of which they come out, go into the bloodstream. Some of them, lymphocytes, they go into a special defense area where they become complement cells to help out with the immune response. Some of them go to the thymus gland, many of them in fact, and they become lymphocytes of different types. You have killer cells, macrophages, uh, helper cells, complementary factors. The intestinal tissue in the liver also makes B lymphocytes, suppressor cells, plasma cells, antibodies, so we have a complex system which begins in the bone marrow with a kind of a generic cell. It's Think of it like a lump of clay and the potter takes it and he shapes it into a cup or a saucer or a different object. So the lymph cells made in the bone marrow are pretty generic. They don't know what they're doing, they're not specialized. They get their education principally in the thymus gland in the first several years of living. And then that specialization goes to other parts, including the spleen, some in the intestine, and um, I can cut out this part while I'm thinking. So it has been discovered recently that in the intestines the once some of the cells have gone through the thymus gland they go for further education in the intestines and they learn there how to distinguish between friendly bacteria harmful bacteria quantities of bacteria what is too much and not enough and what they have found in these studies with children in the younger years is that if you put antibiotics into the system before early age, before age eight, let's say, you interfere with the recognition, the response going through this section here in the intestinal region where they get their education. And if you interfere with that, 
in normal living, the child's immune system will never develop to its full potential. You would have to get into a systematic regime of yoga to enhance and rejuvenate that section. But all of these things are automatically built in. The thymus gland, one of the most important organs of the immune system, vital training cells of the T lymphocytes, killer cells, helpers, suppressor cells. So we have to enhance this and what we're doing with the breathing techniques, the midsection breath is bringing oxygen and prana right into this gland which is located here just above the heart on top of the heart and it also secretes a hormone appropriately called thymosin which is the key neuropeptide known to activate many of the immune functions so knowing about this put this into your mind we have this capability we suppress it by bad breathing holding our breath, stress levels, fear, and white sugar. So contemplate all these things and make the adjustments you need to boost up your immune system now and help other people in need. Anybody can do these things. We all have an immune system. We just need to know how to turn it on. And that's what this is all about. And these cells are clever enough to feel if anything doesn't have the right vibration, the right frequency. They detect the frequency of the molecular level of a bacteria or a virus, all of which are made of molecules, which are always vibrating. So, that's what we need to know. And you need to understand that you have the ability. These are all built into us. The programs are already there in our subconscious. The body knows what to do. What we need to do is supply the oxygen, the prana, the energy level which goes directly into your nervous system and brain, not have a high sugar content in your diet, uh, stay away from carcinogenics like red meat and things, eat a more uh, fruit and vegetable diet, and do this breathing, drink clean water, not alcohol, and allow yourself time to rejuvenate. For myself, at age 71, I have absolutely no fear of any kind of virus. I've, I live in the tropics, I've encountered all kinds of bugs and things, and my immune system, within 24 hours, creates an antibody to take care of the situation. We all have this ability. And if we take too much sugar, we knock that down. If our belief system is in fear and worry, we suppress that whole reactive tendency of the autoimmune system. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it, and we'll go on with the next video with more techniques. For now, 